shall be identified and addressed expeditiously to avoid escalation or further violence. In this respect, attention is drawn to the cases such as Megalis, the situation in the three equatorial states of East, Central, and Western, the intercommunal violence in Warab and Lake States, and other areas. The ongoing killings in Tombora County or Western Equatorial State in particular have led to a situation which has got almost out of hand. As we speak, and according to the official report, police report, coming to the Agus House, over 69,000 of our citizens have been displaced. Nearly 400 homes burned down. And many have been and are being killed on a daily basis. For instance, the day before yesterday, Saturday, 17 decomposing bodies of brutally massacred individuals in the second fight are 43, out of which 17 were collected in and around Tambora town and buried en masse in town, including five women and eight children. Many more bodies in the des deserted countryside remain unburied. The problem in Tombora is unprecedented. On behalf of National Legislature, I call upon all those responsible for the violence to cease those atrocities and on the concerned institutions to expeditiously contain the situation. I also call upon the UN and other humanitarian agencies to urgently provide the necessary humanitarian support to the displaced in all areas engulfed by violence. Your Excellencies, Honorable Members, Ladies and Gentlemen, as South Sudan, along, alongside the rest of the world, grapples with the COVID-19 pandemic, our national legislators are prepared to lead by example in this fight. We will adopt and adhere to all sanitary and uh, social distance, distancing measures, like the use of masks and frequent hand washing, which are advocated by the medical, you, medical and scientific fraternity and also the National Task Force of COVID. Currently, the premises of the National Legislative Assembly is still under renovation. That of the Council of States is too small. Together with the responsible institutions in the executive arm of government, we will exert all efforts to address those problems as soon as possible. We will also look into the possibility of providing office space to all the MP honorable members of parliament, as well as other services to create the right atmosphere to our, for our activities. As I said in my previous speech, the assembly leadership will also have the, res the, pos the possibility of constructing a new and larger parliament building to house the big number of MPs who constitute the national legislature. Your Excellency, the remuneration and emolument of honorable members of parliament is another matter of paramount concern. In that respect, we will, in consultation with the President's office and other, uh, and other institutions, um, and other institutions to find appropriate solutions to them. Furthermore, given the rapid changing circumstances in modern world, MPs need to be in the mode of continuous learning. Accordingly, a tailored training program will be developed to benefit the MPs, especially the new ones in the area, such as parliamentary procedures, diplomacy, in, and international relations, and others. In doing this, we will closely liaise with the relevant institution in the region and our international partners. Mr. President, Excellencies, Honorable Members, Ladies and Gentlemen, South Sudan is a proud member of the, world, of the world's community of sovereign nations. That notwithstanding, we, we could never make it alone. That's why honorable members ought to participate fully 
in the regional and international parliamentary bodies. Those international interactions are an indispensable component of our overall national diplomatic efforts to expose our country and, we, and win over global respect and global sympathy. For that reason, the Office of the Speaker of the Legislature shall keep the executive reminded of timely payment of our country's obligations as a member of those international parliamentary bodies. Your Excellency, allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to remind the Honorable MP about the forthcoming sport tournament for all parliamentarians of member states representing the East African Parliament. This great regional encounter takes place in the first week of December yearly. The Honorable MPs of South Sudan's legislature are expected, are specifically expected to fully participate in this year's tournament. And we expect the former, uh, former speakers, former deputies, and uh, heads of commission to participate effectively in this. To my colleagues in the leadership of the legislature and to the honorable members of parliament, we will, as I said in my maiden speech before the revitalized transitional legislature, relentlessly adhere to the spirit of teamwork in carrying out our parliamentary mandate.